Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Setting Healthy Boundaries with the App State Counseling Center. My name is Nicole D. Ferrari, and I'm one of the uh, therapists here this year. And my name is Shannon Tamai, I'm another therapist in the center, and thank you so much for watching this video. We hope it provides some great information, some practical skills for setting healthy boundaries. So before we get started, we just want to provide a, a couple disclaimers. So this and any other virtual workshop through the App State Counseling Center is intended for psychological, uh, psychoeducational um, purposes in nature only and not designed to provide any um, specific mental health treatment or emergency resources. So if you do um, have concerns about mental health treatment options, please visit our website or give us a call um, at 828-262-3180. Um, and again, if you are experiencing a mental health emergency, such as active suicidal thoughts, please visit our website, read about our emergency services, or call, contact your local emergency responders. Resources may be uh, different based on your specific location. So we're gonna quickly go over our objectives for this presentation. So clearly you're here because you wanna learn about setting boundaries with others. What we're first gonna go over is what are boundaries? That's kind of a coin term that you hear thrown out a lot. So we're gonna go over what a boundary actually is. Then we're gonna review the different types of boundaries that there are. We're gonna dig into more of the characteristics of boundaries, such as what are positive boundaries and what are toxic boundaries and why are boundaries important to maintain to begin with. And then we'll end by talking about how you actually get in there and set healthy boundaries so that your life can operate in a really effective way and the people around you can benefit from your wellness. Yeah, so starting off, what are boundaries? Um, and I'm sure a lot of things come to mind when you hear the word boundaries. So kind of thinking for yourself, what are those first associated terms? Um, and a lot of times when people hear the word boundaries, they think of brick wall, of we're setting up kind of this really intense boundary, people can't come in. and really when we think about what boundaries actually are, they're not a brick wall. It's a roadmap to how to have a relationship with someone. Um, really we can ask ourselves what is and what is not okay within a relationship. So there are these rules that we can set for ourselves within our relationships, recognizing our own needs and what we need within this relationship to feel fulfilled and to feel safe. Um, so again, it's not a brick wall. It's not, this is what you absolutely cannot do. It's understanding what is and what is not okay and how to be treated um, and how to be in a relationship. And so again, this still maybe might feel a little bit nebulous, um, but as we go into the different types of boundaries, this will help become more clear. But remembering that boundaries are not just this brick wall of uh, around you of keeping everybody out. Boundaries actually help us bring people in and in a safe way and in a way that meets our needs as well as the needs of others. Yeah, and as Jenna was talking about, there's actually a lot of different components that go into the different types of boundaries that there are. So as you can see in our little chart here, we have different categories of boundaries. And realistically, you probably have at least one of these type of categories of boundaries with every person that you have a relationship with more likely you have more than one kind of category of boundary with that person or with multiple people in your life, just depending on the relationship, of course. So as you can see, there are physical boundaries, intellectual boundaries, emotional boundaries, sexual and intimacy boundaries, material boundaries, and time boundaries. Now, those have a lot of face value. So if you're wondering what they are, they're basically what they say, physical boundaries. How close will you let someone physically come into your personal space? Intellectual boundaries. What knowledge do you feel comfortable sharing with others based on the conversation? Emotional boundaries. How willing are you to let somebody get emotionally close to you? How willing are you to be vulnerable with others? Sexual boundaries. Who are you willing to allow in and out of your sex life? Material boundaries. Who are you willing to share gifts with? Who are you willing to offer gifts to, accept gifts from? And time boundaries. What are your limits related to timeliness, showing up late, being on time, having some forgiveness there, not having many forgiveness there? Everyone has all of these in some capacity in all of their relationships in one way, shape, or form. Now, 
Each of these categories of boundaries, to add another layer to understanding them, exists across three different uh, types. So we have porous boundaries, we have rigid boundaries, and then we have healthy boundaries. Any of the categories that we just went over can fall under rigid, porous, or healthy. So what's a porous boundary? A porous boundary is a boundary you have with someone when you both are too connected with each other. You tell each other everything in such a way where you become codependent, or in other words, you can't sort of function without this other person's approval or running things past them, or you kind of hear in, in common language, like stage five clinger relationships, that's what we're talking about with por porous relationships. And those really aren't effective. Rigid relationships. Those are in the opposite direction. So rigid relationships and rigid boundaries really involve when people shut others out completely. They're nervous to be emotionally vulnerable, probably because they've experienced some sort of hurt or trauma in the past that's sent a message to them like, hey, I need to keep people out. Well, that's ineffective at the end of the day because we need others. Humans are social creatures, and if we keep others out, ultimately we do suffer in one way, shape, or form. Now, healthy boundaries, to no surprise, are a combination of both of those. It's always good to have a balance of porous characteristics and rigid characteristics, but not to the point where they fall to either extreme. So in other words, you want your boundaries, no matter which of the different categories of boundaries we're talking about, to have a balance. You want them to be open with others so that you're allowing yourself to get your needs from others met. But not so much where you're overly depending on the other people involved in those relationships and connections. And also, you wanna make sure to draw your lines appropriately. Not everybody that you have relationships with needs to know everything about your life. You might not share the things that you share with your best friend that you do to your professor or something like that. So you have to know where to draw the line based on the kind of relationship or boundary category that you have. And we're gonna talk some more about different characteristics of boundaries coming up, but keep in mind different categories of boundaries that you have in your relationships and the different types that those boundaries can fall into. And especially on college campuses, we see a lot of these porous time boundaries mm. of everyone wants to hang out and we wanna be, you know, that FOMO, the fear of missing out. And so often our time is being spent in many other places and it can feel really exhausting. Um, so that's when I feel like we see a lot of, of, well, there's just not enough time in the day to see everyone and recognizing are our boundaries with time a little too porous? Um, and so thinking for yourself as you're watching this, which of those boundaries kind of maybe are some of the more important ones and what relationships um, feel most important within that. Exactly. So what are, so we've talked about different types of boundaries, what boundaries are. So what are these characteristics of healthy boundaries where we're not having a brick wall, but we're having this roadmap and guide. So right off the bat, we want to ask ourselves, what are our relationship values? So healthy boundaries are based on our values. If we value open communication, physical privacy, quality time together. So this takes some kind of self-reflection of how do I want to be in relationships? How do I want to be able to interact within my relationships? And so being able to create that foundation of what are my values, that's a great place to start to then expand to what might those boundaries look like within my values. Characteristics of healthy boundaries allow us to maintain self-respect where we can feel confident saying no if we can't hang out with someone because we have homework to do, we can say, no, this is a time boundary that I'm gonna maintain. Or no, I don't feel comfortable being this close to you. This is a physical boundary I'm gonna maintain. But throughout that, we're maintaining that self-respect of this is what I feel like I need um, and being, being confident with that. Um, reflecting your authentic emotions. So again, how is it, how do we feel kind of really on the inside and really listening to what our needs are um, within the relationship and then again we're respecting other parties our parties involved without overly compromising our needs um, a lot of times we see people saying no, i don't want to hurt anybody else or if i set boundaries and it's going to hurt the other person and often we can 
maybe feel like it might hurt their hurt their feelings and we recognize in the long run it might be help it might be more beneficial to be a little bit stricter with boundaries if we know that's going to make the relationship more healthy overall so we're planting those seeds and maybe it kind of initially stings the other person and that's okay as long as we're sharing in that respectful way of this is my boundary based on my values maintaining my self-respect um, healthy boundaries are also flexible when they need to be to maintain the relationship in both the short and long term and so again we're not compromising our values or compromising our self-respect but recognizing that to have that roadmap boundaries can be a little bit flexible um, again making sure we're not going to that too porous or too rigid um, and recognizing when that might need to happen and in what circumstances but always kind of maintaining your values maintaining your self-respect and authentic emotions but being willing to be flexible if the need arises and i think to further highlight uh, what jenna's talking about here if you are afraid to set a boundary with somebody if you've done all of the different steps that we've or, the, or if you've evaluated all the different characteristics that we've outlined here for healthy boundaries, and you're worried about the person responding to you in a negative way um, or them receiving that sting, probably uh, that person is probably why you clicked on this particular presentation. So what we're gonna go through next is talk about toxic characteristics of boundaries and relationships. And this is important to understand for oneself. And the take home message for this particular part of the presentation is if the relationship that you have in question right now that probably brought you to this presentation, if you identify with even just one of these, that's a sign that the relationship is probably toxic and you're gonna to have to think about setting boundaries. So the first uh, negative or toxic characteristic that we recognize is that you aren't being listened to or your needs aren't being considered in the relationship. It's always about the other person. They make you feel bad for trying to assert yourself. Where is your first sign that this is probably a toxic relationship in some capacity? Uh, they probably make you feel in some respect like uh, your problems aren't valid. Your problems don't matter as much as theirs. They'll often compare your problems to theirs to bring the attention back to them also a characteristic of an unhealthy boundary. Uh, you're always made to feel like you have to be the one to compromise or you have to be the one to make the change, which goes back to highlighting that this person is probably making you feel like the problem. Well, realistically, you're not the problem and you shouldn't be the one who has to compromise every time. That's not how healthy boundaries work. You probably in some way, shape or form feel resentment towards the other person or the other people. Um, or they're driving you a little nuts, for lack of better words. So you'll, if you're, and if you're not sure like how to identify who that is in your life explicitly, it's the person you're always venting about to other people. It's the person that you can't stop talking about because they keep disrespecting your boundaries. And you might not be explicitly aware of that, that they're disrespecting your boundaries, but if they're on your mind to that point where you're feeling the need to vent about them or you have those resentful feelings, Again, there's your sign that that's a component of an unhealthy or toxic boundary. So another important thing to think about is, in terms of a characteristic for a toxic boundary is, you wish that the other person would meet your needs simply by knowing what they are or reading your mind, uh, but they never do. Why do they never do that? Well, people aren't mind readers. And people tend to be, in a lot of respects, healthfully selfish, right, where they worry about themselves typically more than others, which is a normal part of the human experience. Um, but there are also people who are selfishly selfish, where they just don't care about the needs or the experiences that other people have. So what I'm saying here is, is people typically are only thinking about themselves in a lot of capacities. Now, there are those who are empaths and those who put others before themselves. And that's a really great quality to have, but what we know is that empaths have a really hard time advocating for themselves. And that's not to say that empaths are weak, that's not it at all, but we tend to find that they say things like this a lot, like, oh, I just wish they knew that I needed this, or I wish that they just could somehow read my mind and know that this was a boundary problem for me. So, 
if you're thinking that, remember, it's good to be an empath, but this is a sign that your relationship might be in a toxic place. And finally, this is a big one. A characteristic of a toxic relationship is also you feel like you can't say no or you can't turn down the person who you're trying to set the boundary with because you're afraid that they're going to be mad or they're going to be upset. What we can tell you is that if a person is going to respond to a reasonable boundary that you're trying to establish in a negative way, then that's something that's somebody you need to consider potentially moving and shifting around in your life if possible because the people who are in your life that will meet your boundaries with respect are ones you want to keep and ones that shouldn't make you feel afraid uh, of upsetting them or of making them mad. But there are people in our lives who cause that for us. They make us feel like we can't say no. They make us feel like if I try to, um, you know, cancel plans, they're going to be really upset, for example. And that's not okay, because that means that the relationship is all about the other person, and it's not about you. So we're going to talk in a minute here about how to actually set effective boundaries um, so that you can say no and kind of hold your ground in the way that you need to. But just to highlight uh, everything we just reviewed, these are some very basic signs of both healthy and toxic boundaries. Yeah, and so recognizing, looking into your own relationships and seeing where do these boundaries, are, are these healthy, or are these maybe a little bit more unhealthy, and then recognizing why healthy boundaries are important. And that can seem like a really basic question, but this really important to highlight. So having healthy boundaries does help to improve your overall mental health. If you feel safe and secure within a relationship and you and your partner have healthy boundaries, that is a really big indication of having, uh, helping to improve mental health. Another basic thing, you deserve to be respected. We all deserve to be in relationships, um, whether it's romantic, um, friendship, um, family relationships, where we're respected and our boundaries and our needs are maintained. Healthy boundaries uh, are important to help increase positive emotions, contentment with those relationships, Often if you're noticing some of those more toxic boundaries um, within relationships, likely there's some distress that comes along with that and likely why we're, uh, you're listening to this presentation. And so by being able to set those healthy boundaries and recognizing what they are within those relationships helps to increase those, um, those positive emotions and improve, um, improve overall contentment. Also, because you deserve to know and understand your limits with others, uh, so you feel like you might get hurt less. Uh, setting boundaries is hard. Um, recognizing what our boundaries are is difficult. Um, a lot of times we don't necessarily think about it on a day-to-day -day basis or we haven't thought about it before. Um, and it's not until we recognize that some of those boundaries are being pushed upon that we really sit and think of what is okay within this relationship and what is not okay. And you deserve to know what those, what that roadmap is, how to have that, um, that fulfilling relationship. And you deserve to have effective and flourishing relationships. And sometimes that takes a little bit more work and a little bit of that self-reflection of, again, what are my values? What do I need in relationships? And how can I set those healthy boundaries um, to, to, feel, to feel really fulfilled in these relationships? And so really holding on to you know, why these are important um, and being able to kind of sit with, even though it might be difficult, even though it might feel really uncomfortable just to have those conversations and set those boundaries. And Nicole will talk about in a little bit of how to have maybe those tough conversations, but being grounded in that these are my values, this is why it's important to set these boundaries to help, help use as an anchor um, as you're stepping into some of these new conversations and maybe difficult ones at that. So like Jenna was saying, we're going to talk next about how do you actually set the boundaries. And these are the different steps that we have, and we'll get to those in just a second. But I think that a really important thing to highlight and embrace is exactly what Jenna said, and that it is going to feel uncomfortable. Setting boundaries is hard, because in some way, shape, or form, you have to tell someone that they're doing something that's making you uncomfortable in one way, shape, or form. That's not easy to do because we tend to like to keep our relationships 
uh, in such a way where everything's copacetic, everything's fine. Well, a lot of the times, not everything is always copacetic or always fine. So what we ask you to do is you think about these next three steps that we're going to evaluate here is lean into that uncomfortableness. If you're feeling uncomfortable and nervous and anxious, you are doing it right, okay? That's a sign that you are on the right path. So to keep you going on that path, what you wanna do first is evaluate your circumstances. So in other words, step one is all about that self-reflection piece that we've been talking about this whole time, evaluating your values. And the way to do that is to ask yourself the different bulleted questions that we have here. So why am I upset with the way things are? What are the pros and cons of setting the boundary if I do decide to set it? Uh, how will my life be different once the new boundary is in place? And how will the other person be impacted when that boundary is there? Most importantly, what are potential barriers to successfully setting the new boundary? And how can you overcome those barriers? So take some time with step one to sit, reflect, answer these questions thoughtfully, truthfully, and authentically with keeping yourself at the forefront of the answers. This is the time where it's okay to be um, consciously and caringly selfish. That's not a bad thing. We have to put ourselves first in order to be able to be effective for the other people in our lives and have good relationships. So we gotta be able, to, in order to do that, we gotta be able to think about what we need. So the first step in setting boundaries is evaluating your circumstances so that you can get to that answer and understand what you need. So step one, some self-reflection. Step two, this is where the stuff gets good. You actually have the conversation about setting the boundary. And this is often that most uncomfortable piece. But again, this is where we would ask you to just lean in, embrace the uncomfortableness, embrace the anxiety, and set the boundary because it's important. Again, if you know you need to set a boundary, that means that something about that particular relationship is working ineffectively for you. So, way to ask or excuse me a way to have that conversation is you want to be confident you might not feel confident but if you've ever heard that term fake it till you make it this is where you want to employ that so if you're able to portray that you are confident in the boundary that you'd like to send then that sends the message to the other person that you're taking this really seriously and it's not something that they can just push to the side and not consider you're communicating no i need you to consider this big time you want to be clear and you want to be direct. If you communicate a boundary in a wishy-washy, kind of gray way, roundabout way, then what that's going to communicate to the person you're trying to set the relationship with is that you're confused and you don't know what you want. The reality is you're not confused. You do know what you want. You want the boundary, right? So make sure to be clear and direct when you communicate that so that the other person understands exactly what you need. Do not be afraid to say no. If you take away anything from this whole presentation, that is the thing to take away. If somebody comes back at you as you're uh, setting, your, the, setting your boundary with them and they ask you to do something or compromise in a way that you're not comfortable with, tell them no. It is that simple. And if they push back against that no, again, that's your time to start reevaluating, maybe shifting that person in or out of your life in such a way because a reasonable person, a healthy person to have a relationship with, will compromise with you, not against you. So again, remind yourself that the boundary should be driven by your boundary and relationship values that we reviewed earlier. Compromise as you need to, so not to the point where you're not getting what you need, but if somebody asks for a reasonable compromise and you're like, you know, I can still get what I need with that, that's okay. You want to communicate in a level-headed or a calm but firm way. This communicates to the other person, again, that you're serious and that it's something that they need to take seriously as well. Staying calm, cool, and collected, uh, even if the other person gets angry, is also really critical because a lot of the times people escalate their emotions when they feel like they're not getting what they want, and that doesn't lead to an effective conversation and it in fact can make the boundary um, or the relationship worse in different aspects. So if they get angry, don't match them. You stay calm and collected, even if inside you're feeling kind of riled up. Portray on the outside that you're feeling calm, and then step three will allow us to troubleshoot how to deal with any emotions that get riled up. So step three is 
you've reflected, you've had your conversation, now you want to make sure you have support for the aftermath of that boundary conversation and the maintenance of it. So you probably have more than one person in your life, right? Whether it's friends, parents, other relatives, romantic partners, professors, you want to identify people who would be supportive of you that you know you can talk to about how the boundary setting went. Reflection is, a, if you couldn't tell, right, is a hugely important part of this process. So being able to talk with somebody about how that boundary conversation went gives you the space to process any emotions that came up for you. Did the person surprise you? Did they meet you where you were and accepted your new boundary? Did they completely push against it? Either way, you deserve to be able to talk about that and express yourself because that is going to ultimately maintain your emotional wellness and hopefully reinforce the boundary at the end of the day. And along with that, along with having a support system, you want to make sure to engage with self-care. So have activities that are planned around the boundary setting. So something for self-care or in other words, just something that you enjoy that you know brings you um, a sense of relaxation or just a sense of contentment before the conversation and have something lined up after the conversation. This way, the conversation is sandwiched between two enjoyable things and it will help you to get through it and to calm those nerves, that uncomfortableness, and that anxiety. So to summarize, how do you set the boundary? You evaluate your circumstance or do some good old self-reflecting. You actually have the conversation with the person you set the boundary. And then you seek some support from your trusted uh, friends, relatives, romantic partners, whoever is in your support system, along with doing some good self-care. And as we've been going through this presentation, if you heard something that really stands out to you, that you're like, that sounds really important and I still am just not sure how to do it, or I'd really like some extra support in how to do that, please give us a call. We're still here to help. Um, we've been here to help. So if at any point you would like to schedule an initial consultation by phone, again, please give us a call. We're still conducting services um, and that initial consultation is going to be a great starting point to see what resources might be most helpful, what services might be most helpful, um, and we can help kind of guide you in um, what's going to be most beneficial for either helping to set a boundary or evaluating relationships, recognizing what your needs are, what your values are. Um, give us a call. We're more than willing and excited to help in whatever way we can through, uh, through this uh, this part. And here we have, uh, again, our services are um, still ongoing. We have phone consultations. Um, if it's appropriate, we have telemental health services. So we're doing therapy by phone right now. Um, we also have emergency services that we discussed before, uh, a plethora of workshops um, such as this one and check out our um, Feeling Good workshop series for the summer, um, as well as our quick access workshops. Um, and then we also are offering Let's Teletalk. So if you're like, I'm not quite sure about counseling just yet, but I kind of want to get a little bit more information, um, you can attend one of our uh, Let's, Talk, uh, Let's Teletalk hours. Um, it's about a 15, 20 minute consultation with one of our providers, um, just to see what's going on and see if an initial consultation would be helpful. Um, or, and we have a lot of self-help resources on our website. So whatever your needs are, we've got a ton of different resources. Um, so please feel free to peruse, check out, and see what's gonna be most helpful for you. So thank you all so much for tuning in. We're so excited to have had you here today. And we hope that you were able to learn something about setting healthy boundaries. And like Jenna was saying, if you feel like you need some assistance with thinking through this whole thing more or in identifying if you have an unhealthy relationship or in how to actually set the boundary with others. That's what we're here for. So please give us a call. You can click back through the slides or um, play back the video and find our number. But we really appreciate your time, y'all. Thanks for viewing.